Hello and welcome to this video about action models. I'm Valentin Zickner and I'm going to show you how you can create a dashboard in Flowable and add an action to this dashboard. To get started, you need to have Flowable Work installed. You can either use the Enterprise Trial or the Docker Compose files or your custom setup. Now in Flowable Design, we are going to start with creating an app. That app I'm going to call Dashboard App. And uh, once we created the app, I'm going to add a new model, create a new model and a page. A page is nothing else but a form, which is standalone without the context of a case or a process. Now on that page, I'm going to add an action button. And the action button is basically an element to trigger certain actions. Uh, for example, starting a process, starting a case. Whenever you use an action button, you basically trigger some Java code, which is executing something. And then once that is done, you are getting a feedback to the user interface. Now to use that action, I first need to go ahead and uh, basically create a process, which I can start. So let's just create a simple process. And that simple process is going to um, be with a start event, a user task, and an end event. Now, um, this action definition uh, needs to be created with a um, specific action bot. So let's just start and create an action here. Start process uh, instance. And whenever we have our action definition, we can specify a bot key here. That's the name of our Java implementation. So here we are saying BPMN start process instance bot. So basically that is the specific bot key of the bot we would like to use. And then we need to specify a signal name and the signal name is the definition key of our process. We also see that as model key here at the top right when we click outside on our process. So let's just place that signal name in here. We can save that and once we uh, saved all and published it, we can go to Flowable Work, refresh the page here and we see now here on the left side our dashboard app. We can click Start Process and in the background it is going ahead and creating a new process for us. Now rather than navigating manually to work, we can also navigate directly to the process from here when the user presses the button. Therefore, let's quickly go to features where we can enable the engine developer tool since there we can see additional variables which are here. For example, when we go to additional data in here, we see all the out of the box variables which we cannot change. That includes, for example, the current user as well as um, the route parameter. And route provides us current app ID and current page ID. So we can go ahead and say here, we would like to specify as navigation URL, the ID slash ID. Now there are specific sub pages for processes, so slash process or for cases as well, which we can use to navigate a sub page of our um, page to a case or a process. Um, therefore, we still need to know what our process instance ID is. And when you click that button and look at your network tab of your browser debugging console, you see that this is coming back with an execution payload and the execution payload contains an ID. Now we have the possibility in here to use the response with dollar $response, then dot execution payload. That is what we have had inside our response and then dot id. Now when I save that and publish it and go back over here, I'm just going to refresh that and I now press start process instance. It's opening our process instance with the first task here directly. And once we complete that, uh, we are navigating back to our dashboard. Now we can improve our process. Sometimes you would like to enter some information and whenever you would like to have those, you need to go ahead and create a start form. 
So let's create a simple form here. And that simple form contains for now first name and last name that we are able to see that information as well inside our process. I'm also going to link that form for my user task. So let's say we have here the simple form as well. However, to use it together with an action bot, you also need to define that form inside your action definition. So let's use here also the reference to our simple form. And whenever we have done that, we can now go back to our um, dashboard. And whenever we press start process here, we now can provide some information which we would like to have. And then when we open the user task, we see that this information is also here as part of our process. In case the information is not on your user task, most likely you forgot to define the start form on your simple process. So here you definitely also need to define the form. Now we can make uh, our page a little bit nicer. So right now we have one long button button over here. So we can make that button shorter. And the easiest way to do that is actually to use a button group. So we can use a button group basically to style that button. Just drag and drop a new button group in here. And then inside the button group, you can place your button. As soon as you have done that, your button won't be the full size anymore. Now it's just as large as it needs to be. We can also configure here that instead of left, it should be on the right or center. And we can also say it should be a drop down menu. So with that, we have a few possibilities to uh, make that nicer. Now I have here just three little dots with a sub menu to basically start a new process instance here. And I can provide the information here. And once executed, I am navigated to my task. So thank you very much for watching. I ho hope you enjoyed this video. Please feel free to check out our additional videos and see you next time.